Our text for today is taken from the book of Hosea, the fifth chapter, the last verse or so of chapter 15, of five, and then the first six verses of chapter six. <clears throat> I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. Come and let us return to the Lord, for he is torn, but he will heal us. He is stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do to you? O Judah, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud, and like the early dew it goes away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And your judgments are like light that goes forth. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Heavenly Father, sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Are there times in your life where you feel you're away from the Lord? That's really what he's addressing here. And there's times of horrible strife that we all go through in our families, in our lives here on earth. When we lose someone close to us. I'm starting my 24th year as a pastor. Buried a lot of moms and dads over those years. Had some huge funerals, some small funerals. But there was someone at every funeral crying. And it's easy as a human being when things aren't going well. <clears throat> that we might say, has God moved away? Well, our text tells us the other thing is more than likely that God hasn't moved away. Sometimes we have because we're not trusting him. It's amazing as we look into this world, we see something that finally went right with all the stuff that's been going on for the last couple of years. With the war in Ukraine, something finally went right and everybody's complaining about it. And I didn't want to use the word complain. I wanted to use something stronger. That the world is going to hell. That word return is an incredible word in the text. Usually it's shuv in the Hebrew language, to return, to turn around. And we're not just talking about all the times when we forget what we walked into a room for and have to turn around and figure it out again before we go back into the room. But it's literally on the path to hell. And Jesus says, why it is the road to hell? There's a joke among people who like rock music that there's a highway to hell, but only a stairway to heaven. Narrow is the path to heaven, Jesus says. Wide is the path to destruction. And so that word return means everything in our text. It's repentance. To not follow the road to hell, the road to Satan, but to turn around, to have a change of heart. And that word means so much to the Christian because what does God have to do to us? He has to turn us around. And in the text, even though he's telling us to turn around, 
Who's the one speaking? Driving the turn around. As any decent parent whose child is bent on hell and doing something that they shouldn't be doing, as any good parent turns that child around by making it gradually harder and harder and harder and harder, boy, I don't know that I want to go through this anymore. I'd better stop and turn around. So the Lord gives this promise to us in love as any good parent. I will do whatever I have to do to get your attention and turn you around. Even sometimes when the parent says, this is going to hurt me more than you, well, guess what? It did. And do you think that he wants to punish us or make it hard for us when he loves us and wants us to have all things? Nobody also knows what we need. And that we need to be with him. So Hosea beautifully writes this about repentance. And it's all about repentance and it's from God's understanding because he understands repentance. I will return again to my place. If they don't want to be with me, I'll back off and let them think that they can handle it for a while. How's that going to work? And when everything goes to pot, till they acknowledge their offense, then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. Because we know where we've got it good, don't we? A relative of mine was on the phone with me earlier today. How do I get my lazy kid to stop needing me to bail them out all the time? There comes a time when you got to push the bird out of the nest. And so who's speaking really? It says, come and let us return to the Lord. He's putting himself with us and saying, come let us return. He doesn't need to go back to the Lord. But what does he do? How does he phrase it? The book of Hosea is an amazing book in the Old Testament. It teaches the marriage between God and people better than any other book in the, Old, in the Bible. He calls Israel his adulterous wife. But in chapter 2, he starts wooing her. He's not the one that needs to apologize. She is. But in our text, too, what is he doing? He's, come on. It's not just that thunderous God pounding. You deserve what you get. It's that loving God who says, come on. You know where it's good. You know who loves you. You know who is willing to sacrifice for you. And is it any wonder that he says, if you're trusting in your Old Testament sacrifices, that's not what I want. That doesn't pay for anything. I want you to love me back. What a horrible place to be if God pulls back his love from us, huh? And so he gives us a call to repentance. And the craziest part of this is that he's leading the charge back to himself. That he comes after the sinner. 
Now we see it all through scripture, don't we? Zacchaeus, I need to go to your house today. Met the woman at the well at the exact time she was going to be there. Because he goes after sinners. In our gospel text, Matthew, a tax collector, but knowledgeable and understanding, mathematically minded. And what happens, he wrote the first gospel that we have in the New Testament. Because he's used to details and ledgers and writing. And of course, we have that gospel text too. I came to heal sinners, those who know that they're sick. And yet he does this in not an angry way but in a wooing way. And he says, I will do whatever I have to to get you to follow me, to get you to be with me. Even if it's uncomfortable for me, even if I don't like it, but I will do whatever. I don't know if this is as fitting as anything else, but I remember my father saying, talking about, you know, see, grandpa, both of my grandpas grew up on the farms. And so my dad used some farming analogies because he was used to it from his father and from my mom's father. And he says, sometimes you got to carry a stick to get the donkey's attention. He would often refer to having to do discipline in the Christian day school because he was the vice principal and he was the one who was in charge of discipline in the school. And he would use that picture from the farm. God doesn't come to us with a two by four tonight. He comes to us as if he was a loving husband, as if he was proposing to his wife. Gets down on his hands and knees. I want you with me. I will love you better than anyone else can. All those other false gods can't give you anything. What I can. And it's interesting, who's making the promises, really? <clears throat> well, we can't make the promises because we'll break them. So who's the one making the promise in the marriage that we have with God? It's all on him, isn't it? He has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. Are there times that we go through testing? Yes. <clears throat> I've been doing this 23 years. You don't think I've been burned in the fire as I've gone through these things that I've been tested and I've come out stronger on the other side. I see the same things in my wrestling boys. They got to break down the muscles so they can build them up stronger. And we get that testing too in our lives, don't we? But it's always with the point that I can't do this on my own. And so I need someone stronger. Someone better. Someone who loves faithfully. Which I can't always do. And so what do we see him teaching us today? He says... Learn the lesson from Scripture. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Why? Because where else could we better be? Peter says the same thing in the New Testament, and it's even in one of our liturgies. Lord, to whom should we go? 
You have the words of eternal life. Who else can give us that? Desire the Lord and his word. Love the mercy of the Lord and his forgiveness. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. As we live our lives, how are we to show that we have this strength in us? Not by a show of force, but in love. I looked at my wife this last week as she was holding a five-day-old baby and she got her baby fix and I don't want to hear about it for a while. Again, no, just kidding. But in love, to defend the weakest among us. And again, we praise God again today. In the Old Testament, God gives the picture of the kinsman redeemer. The one who was like Boaz, who took Ruth into his house as his wife. And the phrase throughout the Old Testament is, the defender of the widow, the father of the fatherless, or the father of the orphan. The one who stood up and said, yes, I will take them under my roof protection into my house. Is it any wonder why Jesus gives that impression? Because isn't that exactly what he does? Yeah, nobody else might want them. But I to the point where I would give my life protect them, to love them, to hold them in my arms. Lord Jesus, may we always see this love in you. Even when you're testing us, even when we're going through trials and temptations, you're always there on your hands and knees getting dirty Come back to me. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all our human understanding. Let that peace be with our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.